Suppose that you were party B, and you controlled completely the drawing of the districts. And so now you're the map maker, and you're a partisan map maker. You're trying to help your party out as much as possible. How would you draw them? Vertically. Vertically, yeah. Vertically. Just, just columns? So sorry. Yeah, 10 columns. 10 columns? Yeah. Let's do it. Like that? These aren't exact. They should actually include every single circle and every single column. But I, I do this, right? And I do 10 of them. OK. And then if I do that, how many? Um, B had 55% of the votes, right? But how many seats will it win? 10. Uh, 100%. And A would have 45% of the votes? And it gets zero, right? OK, so if you have a majority, you can you can dominate with gerrymandering, right? Okay. What if you're a minority and you're pink? Suppose that pink controlled. So now you're the partisan map maker for the pink party. Well, what are you going to do? You have a lot on the pink horizontal and very few on the green. Okay. I think how many seats do you think you can win for your party? I'm deciding whether I'm going to hire you as my map maker. <laughs> Tell me what you can do for me. What can you do for me? I want all the seats. Right. Is it possible to get all of the seats? No. Not if you're a minority. You can't win all the seats. You can't get 10 out of 10. But what? they have to be equal? Very good question. You mean an equal number of circles? Yeah. An equal number of They do today because the Supreme Court has adopted one person, one vote. And they did that 50 years ago and launched what's called the reapportionment revolution. Right? But that was not the rule before the 1960s. So let's imagine for a second we had no rule. We, did, we didn't have one person, one vote. Imagine what happened before the 60s. You're a minority. How many can you get? Nine. That's right. And how do you do it? Nine. Yeah. So what you do now, um, so now we need to introduce some terminology, OK? And here's the terminology. Um, sorry, let me go back to my rectangles. Uh, so election law scholars, they like catchy, they like catchphrases, and they use the terms packing and cracking. And so this is how, what we do is we take, we pack all of the Green Party into one district, and then we'll make nine other districts here. So who would stand for that? <laughs> Okay, so, so now, here, here's what happened historically. It wasn't really a square, and they didn't even have to do it on purpose. Here's what happened. Start in 1901, right? And you just give every, every county gets one, one seat, right? And then you start having urbanization. And what happens is naturally over time, the urban, the, the rural areas get less and less populated, and the big cities get more and more populated. Right? But don't update the maps. Never change it. That's, and and that's, that, that's, that's what was called the malapportionment crisis. Um, so what was happening... Uh, should I try to go back to my PowerPoint or just... <laughs> yeah. So what, what was happening was, naturally, more and more people were kind of naturally packing themselves into cities but those cities were not getting any more representation, right? And there might be correlations between urban versus rural and maybe party and race, right? And so um, people in the cities started saying, hey, there's a lot of us here in the cities, but we only seem to be getting one out of the 10 districts, or we only seem to be getting a very small representation. Maybe we should stop just drawing it based on what the old world uh, counties were, and we should draw it so that there's roughly the same number of people, right? Um, now, there's a powerful argument for why that, that's the way democracy should work, right? It doesn't, um, there's something funny about having all of those green voters in just one district, right? And by the way, if we did that, um, so if we do this packing strategy, um, and there's 10, Right, so imagine I do nine of these here, right? How many districts does party A get out of the ten? Nine. nine. Yeah. Nine. And so they get 90% seat share. Mm -hmm. 
uh, with only 45%. And party B gets only 10% of the representation, right? And if, if you got 10% representation on a le uh, in a legislature, you, you have no power at all. You know that 90% majority, veto proof, uh, filibuster proof, you, you run the legislative agenda, right? But this means that a numeric minority runs the legislative agenda, right? Um, now, now, what what can we do about it? Let's zoom out for a second. What can we do about it, right? This is a natural function of districting. As soon as you start drawing districts like this, you can manipulate it, and it's very it's. Whoever gets to draw the lines has amazing power, awesome power. Awesome in the sense that it can be abused, right? Um, traditionally, it was the legislature that itself that had that power. And do you trust the politicians in the legislature to not abuse that power? So, so but then what do we do, right? And so, so there's a couple things we can do, right? In general, if there's a problem in America, we can handle it at the federal level or at the state level. We can have politicians handle it, or we could have judges handle it. And we could have uh, elected representatives handle it, or we can use direct democracy and have referendums on stuff, right? Those are the main options we have available to solve big political problems, right? A lot of people are worried that this is a really big problem and politicians aren't going to fix it. Um, so that leaves the courts and the people. Now there's, there's a couple things that we can do, and there's a couple things that people have tried to do. People, through ballot measures, have tried to take away districting power from legislatures and give it to independent districting commissions, right? That's what Idaho now does. Except Idaho is one of the few states in the country where the legislature just did that on its own. It was actually the legislature that agreed to do that. Why did the Idaho legislature agree to do it? Because they control the right. Yeah, well, so but the way the commission set up, there's six members, three appointed by Democrats, three appointed by Republicans, and it's like the majority leader, the minority leader, and the House and the Senate. Um, but you need four of them to agree to a map, right? And when I taught election law, I had one of the commissioners come and talk to our students about it, and they explained how difficult it is to try to do that, right? You got three Democratic appointees, three Republican appointees, and then you got to try to draw a map. Right, mm -hmm. and for Idaho, you got four, you got uh, 44 counties in Idaho, right? And people would like to keep counties together if possible. It's really hard to do it. Um, and the the commissioner that we had, Julie Kane, she's the managing attorney for the Nez Perce tribe. She was mm -hmm. appointed to serve on this commission, and she served on this commission. And she and her colleagues on the commission tried really hard. They couldn't figure it out. They had a three-three vote. They couldn't agree, and they had to appoint a new commission. <laughs> um, but politicians are appointing people to the commissions, right? Mm. California has recently adopted an independent redistricting commission. It's more, I think it's interesting because it's, it's, uh, it's not bipartisan in that Republicans appoint some members and Democrats appoint others. It's just, in, it's just nonpartisan. And so there's a process for selecting members that's designed to try to have members who really are independent. But if you give anybody this power, aren't you worried that they might have an incentive to go one way or the other? Mm -hmm. Arizona has an independent redistricting commission. They don't have six, so they don't have the 3-3 three, three vote problem. They have five. Mm -hmm. Two appointed by Republicans, two appointed by Democrats, and then one is supposed to be the independent. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens there? <laughs> the two Republicans want one plan, the two Democrats want one plan, and the person in the middle has a really tough time. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they, they voted with the Democrats. Um, so that, that's one strategy. It, that strategy is for the people to take districting power away from the legislature and transfer it to some independent commission. And I, I think that, that that's been one of the primary responses. It makes a lot of sense. I'm not trying to, um, I don't mean to impugn people who are supporting that. I think that that's a significant reform. It might be an improvement. I do want to suggest it might not be a, a silver bullet. Because those commissions, you know, those are people too. They, they might be manipulable too, right? Also, it's, it's hard to actually set up a commission and have it work and have it function properly, right? In Arizona, the legislature is refusing to fund the commission. Now what do you do? The governor wants to fire somebody from the commission. Now what do you do, right? All of these spikes are happening in Arizona. And this only works if you have a state that has direct democracy. Not every state does, right? Now, another thing you can do is use direct democracy and just 
get rid of districting entirely and say, let's use proportional representation like is used in, in some countries in Europe and other parts of the world, where we stop drawing any districts at all and we just have one big election. And if it's 55% support one party and 45% support the other party, then that's what will happen in the legislature. Right? Um, I, again, I think that there, that's, a, that's worthy of consideration, and I think that people who are, you know, who are making, arguing for that, um, I think they have good reasons to argue for that. It's been most popular at the local level, so increasingly there are cities that choose their city council in that way, or choose their school board in that way. So like Cambridge, Massachusetts might, is starting to do that. And there's actually several dozen um, local governments that are starting to adopt proportional representation systems. Now, proportional representation is not perfect either. Um, can anyone see any problems with the proportional representation? Big cities. Hmm? Big cities. So, can you flesh it out for us and oh, unpack it for us? Oh, well, I mean, if you've got a state that has just two large cities in it, and then... Then they're going to dominate everything. And then the rest is... I mean, Arizona has Phoenix and Tucson, and we have Boise. And, right, and, Boise, you know... Boise. <laughs> right, and so, um, you, you, it, basically, we might be worried that um, there will be no representation for minorities. And when I say minority, I don't just mean a, a racial minority, but a political minority, a rural versus urban minority, right? Um, this is the same problem the founders were struggling with when they were setting up Congress, right? Should it just be proportional? Should it be based on people? Or should it be protecting you know, the, the individual interests of distinct subgroups? You know what they did? They split the baby. They made Congress have House and Senate, right? And, you know, uh, the reason Idaho, Idaho gets two senators, just like California. That is not proportional, right? Um, but, and some people say we should stop doing that. Let's get rid of the Senate. The Senate is, is inconsistent with the democratic norm of just proportionality, right? So is the Electoral College. Because the Electoral College, the number of electoral votes that your state gets, is equal to the number of representatives and senators, right? So, Idaho gets two senators. California gets two senators, right? Now, California has more representatives because that's based on population. So some say, and there's good reasons to argue for it, get rid of the Electoral College, get rid of the Senate, just have everything just determined by majority rules, right? There's good arguments against that. Right, and the, and the arguments <laughs> against, exactly, exactly, <laughs> right? And the, and the arguments against that are, what about a small state like Idaho, right? Uh, there's other arguments against it, too. There's other problems with proportional representation. If you go to some countries in Europe that have proportional representation, there's some benefits, but there's some drawbacks, too. They don't have, just have two parties. Yeah. When you stop drawing districts and have winner-take-all elections, you start having incentives to start having more than two parties. And so some European countries have three, or five, or 11, right? And you might get one, a small party that represents the narrow interests of certain groups, a neo-Nazi party the Communist Party, right? And then they each have one or two legislators in the legislature, and then it makes it harder to govern, right? And you have all these governing coalitions, the Israeli democracy is set up in this way, you have they all have to, you have to have agreements between all the parties to have governing coalitions, and then they disagree, and if the government collapses, they have to do a new election all the time. Um, and what it's basically doing is, instead of us trying to figure everything out within the two, two main parties, we choose as many parties as we want, and then our parties figure it out in government, right? Another problem, if you, if you don't have districts, you won't have an individual representative. Constituent services, you have a question about how to access a government benefit, or you call your local representative, they live nearby, they can drive, you know, you can go visit their office. If we just have one big election for everything, who will your representative be, right? Okay, so that's the idea of just getting rid of districting power, and it would completely solve gerrymandering. There would not be any more gerrymandering, but there might be some other problems too, right? So then here's the final idea. Okay, let's keep drawing districts, but let's have the courts get involved and stop the map maker from drawing gerrymandered districts, right? And that's what people have been asking the court to do. They asked the court to do it 50 years ago, and they said, adopt one person, one vote, require that these districts have the same number of people, and the court agreed to do that. Um, they've also, there's some rules saying 